Hello again and welcome to another Mordian Glory Bolt Action video. In today's episode we shall be casting our ever critical eye over another Bolt Action unit. Once again we shall be delving into the forces of Germany, taking a look at another of their armoured vehicles. Well, I say it's a German tank, but its origins are actually from Czechoslovakia. That's right, we'll be looking at some superior technology. And I am, of course, talking about the mighty Panzer 38T. Despite being overshadowed by more famous Panzers, such as the Panzer III and the Panzer IV, the 38T was actually one of the most common German armoured vehicles, with 1,500 of them being produced. It's a fantastic little light tank and one that you definitely want to be aware of if you're building up your German army. And so you know what? Without further ado, let's not mess around any further. Let's mount up, roll out, and take a look at the good, the bad, and the ugly of this vehicle. As is tradition, let us begin with a brief overview of what the hell this unit actually is. The Panzer 38T is an early war light tank, and whilst it can be used in your armies of Germany, and is in the main armies of Germany, but please don't think this is some obscure theatre unit, uh, its origins are actually in that of Czechoslovakia, where huge numbers of them were captured and then put into service by the Germans. Whilst some consider it to be an early war only vehicle, it actually did have quite a long lifetime in World War II and can be used in all of the different eras, early, mid and late war. The vehicle took part in the fall of France. It then took part in Operation Barbarossa. That's your earlier mid covered easily. And then when you get into the late war, many of them were converted over to other vehicles such as the Marder. But by the end of the war, the Germans were pressing all sorts of armored vehicles into service. So it is not out of the realms of possibility to still use this thing it, to represent some last ditch armored formations that the Germans were putting together in 1945 and other late war periods. So now that we've established this unit is comfortable in the majority of your games that you'll be able to play, let's see what it's bringing to the table. Well, it has three different points values depending on whether you want to take inexperienced, regular or veteran. At inexperience, it is dirt cheap at 108 points. At regular, it's 135 points. And at veteran, it's still a very affordable 162 points. What's significant about this points cost is not only does it make it very easy to just slot one of these into your list and have plenty of points left over for all the other toys that you might want, but there are actually arguments to be made for taking it at all the different experience levels. Unlike some of the German big tanks we've been reviewing recently where it's regular or bust because inexperience is just not worth it on an already very expensive unit and veteran is just prohibitively too expensive. With this thing being only 108 points in experience, you could throw one in your list, just have it machine gun down some stuff, and if it doesn't do a huge amount except for scatter pins left, right, and center, that's fine. You've more than got your money's worth out of this thing. If you take it 135 points, that's fine. It's, it's a little bit more expensive, but really not a big deal. And then at least, you know, you don't have to worry about the, the pins as much because uh, it should be able to ignore things that can't penetrate its armor. Uh, it should do as it's told more reliably uh, and it won't have that mass one to hit. So the regular has all the advantages that we know, know and love for regular, which just makes it down the middle pretty reliable and solid. But then you go to veteran. I'm like, well, I'm, I'm looking at this thing and I'm looking at veteran. And I'm thinking that's really not a bad points cost for a veteran tank. 162 points. You'd get something that would have fantastic uh, leadership. So it's almost always going to do as it's told when it comes to order checks. Um, and... It will also ignore a lot of things that can't damage its armor. If someone is hitting you with like a heavy machine gun, if someone's hitting you with an anti-tank rifle, if it can't physically penetrate the armor of this thing, it can go, oh, I'll just ignore it and just keep rolling around. And even though that might be a somewhat niche a scenario, um, you do find that in late war, heavy machine guns are quite prevalent. You do find that anti-tank rifles are actually taken nearly all throughout 
the war just um, in bolt action just because a cheap dice that can actually do something and so you find I, I think veteran whilst you might not find it does something for you every game it's not a huge upgrade it's 162 points you're only spending an extra what 27 points on putting this up to veteran so whilst i believe that the vast majority of people will take it as regular because that is what most gravitate towards when it comes to vehicles you can see that because of its very very low points cost you can make arguments both ways for going down inexperienced or going down veteran and considering that it is quite a cheap tank, it does pack a respectable amount of punch. It has one turret mounted light anti-tank gun with a coaxial MMG and then one forward facing hull mounted MMG as well. The light AT gun, I would certainly consider that supplementary anti-tank. On its own, it's not going to be enough to deal with enemy armored vehicles. Even if you're encountering early war light vehicles, or medium tanks, it's still, it's not great. If you are shooting at an enemy enemy light tank, for example, and you're over half range, you're only going to have penetration plus three, which means in order to glance them, you're going to need to roll a five. In order to pen them, you're going to roll six. You see, light AT guns aren't even that good at dealing with other light tanks, especially at certain ranges. And you are likely to be over half range because you've only got a 48 inch maximum range. So your over half range is 24 inches. 6x4 boards like bot action often plays on, often playing uh, with the, the, sh the deployment being the short table edge, so you've got a long way to shoot at each other. Yes, you could find that you are firing at long range often. So the light AT gun, I see it, see it more as it's kind of an armoured car and uh, it's kind of a half track style and truck hunter. So if you know someone is bringing like an armour 7 vehicle, you know, you've got a much better chance of being able to do something to that. Um, if you see someone's running like a truck, you could quite happily blow that up with a, uh, with a light anti-tank gun. But it's certainly not going to be able to threaten anything more. than The moment someone turns up with a... If you, if you encounter a KV-1 with this thing, at best, you will glance it. And that's going to be... Even if you're in half range. So I would say that the light AT gun... And I've used this vehicle, by the way, and I, and I used it and I thought, oh, well, the light AT gun will be enough. I'll take that and you know, I'll take like a medium anti-tank gun team and like an anti-tank rifle and that will be that will be fine. I'll be covered. And I, I found, frankly, the light AT gun was not able to keep up with even the majority of medium tanks that I was encountering. So seriously, just consider it. I know I'm massively over-egging the point here, massively laboring it, but it's very much a supplementary weapon. If it gets a few, if it penetrates and puts a, if it doesn't penetrate, but at least can put a pin on enemy unit, which they can't ignore, then that's a job well done. For me, the main draw of this thing actually is the double MMG. Considering that it does benefit from the buzzsaw special rule, uh, this thing can put out 12 medium machine gun shots. Now, yes, you could go for a Panzer 1, and that can also put out 12 medium machine gun shots for a very, very low points cost for simply 70 points the panzer one is only uh, armor seven so it can be threatened by pretty much any kind of anti-tank whereas the panzer 38t its damage value is armor eight plus so it can actually resist things like heavy machine guns it can resist things like uh, anti-tank rifles and even going up to light at guns it's not so bad as we said, like it um, before, when we were put, looking at this using its light, light tank, tank gun, but enemy light tank, it's going to be fives and sixes really to be doing the damage, and that that goes back the other way. So it's it's relatively well armored for the points cost, and it allows you to get uh, quite a lot of dacker onto the field for a cheap points cost. Essentially, if you're looking at the Panzer One and you're thinking that is good. But in my local games, Armour 7 just ain't going to cut it. Uh, and if you're looking, you're also you're thinking, well, the Panzer 1, whilst it is very efficient, it would be kind of ahistorical to be using one of these things, running around in late 
Op- Operation Barbarossa or Case Blue. Do you know what I mean? The problem, especially getting into the the later war, you can't really justify Panzer One still being there. Uh, but very much, you could still have your Panzer Thirty Eight T. So I think the extra that the machine guns are good and the the damage value is good. And I would almost think of running this primarily as a tough machine gun platform. A little bit more expensive, of course, but a tough machine gun platform nonetheless. So the weapon options for the Panzer 38T are kind of cool. You can replace all of its weapons. That includes the whole machine gun with a turret mounted light automatic cannon with a coaxial MMG for a reduction of 30 points. This is the reconnaissance variant. Now it doesn't actually get recce as a rule. I think that's just a bit of flavor text. Um, but that essentially would make it 105 points regular. And that means that it is the same cost as a Panzer II. So you can use this as a Panzer II, pseudo Panzer II if you want. Or you can keep it with its potentially more unique uh, loadout with the light anti-tank gun and the medium machine guns. But there is that cool option. Okay, now you might be thinking, but Mordian, why would I ever do that? Why wouldn't I just get a Panzer II? That if I want a Panzer II, I'll have a Panzer II, right? Well, there's one in-game reason, and there is one real-life reason. The in-game reason is that if you take the uh, Panzer 38T and replace its automatic, replace its weapons with the automatic cannon, and you take it as inexperienced, it will be 78 points which is actually six points cheaper than an inexperienced Panzer II. Those are the kind of savings that you just can't overlook. <laughs> it, I, I actually don't know why it is weirdly cheaper to take an inexperienced Panzer II, uh, sorry, Panzer 38 than to take a Panzer II. They are identical in every single way. But then that does go, that doesn't work out entirely because if you take it as regular, it's exactly the same. But if you take it as veteran, it comes 132 points, which is actually six points more than a veteran Panzer II. I don't know why. I suspect it's just a little work of the points system that Warlord uses. But if you really, really need to save six points, you can take your Panzer 38T as inexperienced and give it an auto cannon. Of course, that is a phenomenally niche benefit to taking the auto cannon variant and realistically it's not going to be a factor the real world factor though actually is a proper factor because you don't need to buy a panzer 3 and a panzer 2 in order to have the benefits of both tanks if you go down the panzer 38t you see the panzer 3 can be taken as a regular tank for 135 points the light and tank gun, coaxial machine gun, all machine gun, right? And the Panzer II can obviously get the auto cannon. But if you go for a Panzer 38T, then you're essentially getting two in one. One game, you could be like, okay, I'm going to use it in the anti tank variant. One game, you're like, okay, I'm going to use it in the auto cannon variant. So it allows you to, well, save a little bit of money, which is good, and gives you a unit which is eminently flexible, depending on what your local meta or competitive scene might look like so that just about covers the cost and weapons and all that kind of stuff but let's get into the deep dive and i appreciate that we've already covered a lot of the pros and cons but let's just go a little bit further with the panzer 38t it is overall i think a very cost effective vehicle and that really can't be stressed enough you get a lot of machine gun power. You get a decent amount of durability, some cool weapon options as well. And it's just very, very flexible. There's a lot to like about this unit. Uh, also, the fact that they can be used in multiple time periods without any real issues is great. And it's kind of cool, I think, from a historical perspective, that the Panzer divisions and units of the German army were so reliant upon what was fundamentally not a German vehicle, which I think is just fascinating. In terms of its downsides, though, you will find that it is not really suitable for tank-on-tank -tank warfare. As we've said sort of quite a lot, that light anti-tank gun really isn't up to the task for more than 
being supplementary. And I think it's power is going to be more psychological. The fact that it has a, an anti-tank gun, albeit a light one, will certainly make your opponent be a little bit more cautious if he's driving a Sherman or a T-34 at you. But I think once the first couple of shots have well, bounced off or at best done a little glance, I think your opponent will quickly realise that this is a light tank. And as such, it can be quite easily bullied by any, anything which is heavier than it. And considering that medium tanks are possibly the most common kind of tank you're going to encounter, not necessarily the best, not necessarily the meta, but most games with uh, sort of pickup games, all that kind of stuff, are going to feature medium tanks. They're going to feature Cromwells and, like we said, T-34s and Shermans of all the different varieties. So just being aware that this is not uh, a tank's tank. This is a tank. This is a bully tank, for sure. For myself, I find that the Panzer 38T has one big disadvantage, which is I often rely upon my tanks fighting tanks. If you look at a lot of the German vehicles that you have available to you, the common ones, like the Panzer IV, you'll notice that they often have heavy guns, which allows them to always have the one up, the leg up on their allied counterparts. And so it's a little bit of a uncomfortable feeling or you have to really change your mindset and your tactics when you're building a journalist that doesn't have that innate advantage. If you don't have any other anti-tank options in your army, if you are like me and you rely upon the Panzer, the late war Panzer III or the Tigers or Panzer IVs to knock out the enemy vehicles and you don't have things like Panzer Shrek teams or anti-tank rifles, Panzer 38T is not going to be for you. You are, whilst it's cheaper in points, you need to be aware that there will be some hidden costs when you take into account the other anti-tank options you're going to have to put into your list to make up for its deficiencies. However, there is one faction which I think really benefits from the Panzer 38T. That is the Hungarians. There are a number of allied factions, such as the Hungarians, which can use something called Axis support. It allows them to get a number of German units and just put them into their list. Uh, you can't, sorry, let me be clear, you can only have one. German unit, but you've got a number that you can choose from. It's probably a better way of putting it. So I've seen uh, Hungarian armies where they've taken a Panzer 38T because they can just take that themselves. And then they've put another Panzer 38T in there using Axis support. And then they've gone to the armored car slot and they've put like a Toldy in there, which is technically a tank, but it goes into the armored car slot because it was a bit of a weird one. So you've got like three tanks that you can include in like a Hungarian army. And that's a lot of armor domination. And it's not costing you a huge amount. Like that's two bands of 38Ts is 135 points. You could totally in there as well. I think that's a similar amount. And you're looking at 370 to 400 points of just lots of armor. And that armor is bringing a lot of machine guns to the table. And it's bringing some anti-tank to the table as well. You know, two light AT guns. That's that's starting to be quite a lot of supplemental anti-tank. And you'd probably only need one other thing in your list to help cover the tank, uh, the anti-tank needs as well. Or you could just ride and die and be like, you know what? I'm not going to worry about anti-tank because I've got three in my army. So my opponent will spend all game trying to blast my tanks with his like one medium tank. And that's fine. And by the time he's, we take into account cover, limited game turns, all that kind of stuff, my tanks will have got what I need them to do done, which is bully the crap out of enemy infantry. Overall, I think that the Panzer 38T is a really good vehicle. I wouldn't say that it has any huge disadvantages. It's not got anything that's going to massively hamstring it as a unit. It's more like it's got limitations. And being aware of those limitations and how you can solve them with other units in your army is really the key to making this unit sing. But I think it will sing when properly used. Of course, all of that is just like my opinion, man. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Are you a fan of the Panzer 38T or do you prefer to go down the route of things like the Panzer 3 or the Panzer 4? 
Don't forget, if you enjoyed this video, to smash that like button and also subscribe to never miss an episode. Would you like to know more? If so, then please consider becoming a channel member or patron. By supporting the channel, not only will you be doing your part, but you'll also be helping me create more content for your viewing pleasure and unlocking a whole host of perks. You get everything from a badge next to your name, custom emojis, but the big one is access to the Mordian Glory Discord server, an online community with almost two and a half thousand active members. It's always popping off in the MG Discord. We've got channels for army lists, hobbying, tactics, stories, and even a pretty spicy meme section as well. For all you greenhorns that wanted to see the Mordian glory hole, today is your lucky day. And joking aside, I do want to say a massive thank you to all of the current channel members and patrons. You guys are amazing. Truly the lifeblood of the channel. I could not do Mordian glory full time without the incredible and generous support of my members. So thank you guys so much. And last, but certainly not least, I want to say a personal thank you to all of my top tier Patreons. These are the War Masters and they have truly gone above and beyond the Call of Duty. So a big shout out to Bon Bon Vert, Mad Larkin, Marcus Roberts, Mark Panconi, RJ Scorpion, Swordfish Trombone, John Stubbs, Nick Walsh, Diesel Fox and August Varney. Thank you guys so much. Your incredible generosity is a massive part of how I'm able to do more Duke Glory full time. And it is a big driving force behind the channel. But I hope you all enjoyed today's video. Thank you for watching. And of course, as always, I'll see you guys next time.